when less is more. This is Bonnie McGowan at Banika Shears answering your questions about sharpening German type shears. I got an email today um, from, I'm, we're going to call him Bob, he's in Europe, I won't give out his name and I won't tell you what country, but his um, email was some help needed. And he says, hi Benika, I'm a new sharpener in my country. I was trained in, he was in, there in Europe. It's about less than a couple of months that I'm sharpening shears for a professional hair cutter. I'm looked plenty at your YouTube videos and learned a lot of tricks. Thanks for that. It's really helpful. I work with an Okami Gold machine and DMT diamond plate, medium fine, double X fine grit, and a 2000 grit water stone. Now, here's the key. I just purchased a combined 3000-8000 grit Japanese stone to get better polishing and final results. And then he goes on to explain how he's holding his um, um, shear when he's working the rod line he says um, <clears throat> he can't get an even rod line like I get and the tip doesn't cut when it's testing on wet toilet tissue. I put the pressure on the pivot area and he's, he's doing it in the correct positioning and this is what his results are. Now there are a couple of things that I see that is going on here. Number one, he sharpened a German shear like a Japanese shear. We all have our own personalities. We all have our own purposes in life and same thing with shears. If it's a German shear designed for cutting like straight across, nice crisp, no push cutting, strong steel to hold up, you don't want to sharpen it and make it perform like a Japanese shear or something that's going to slide and slither through the hair. So Bob's mistake was to get the 8,000, well, getting the 8,000 grit stone wasn't a mistake. He's going to use that on other shears, maybe. But his mistake is trying to recreate a shear that's not designed to do that. I just saw a picture on one of the sharpening... Um, blogs uh, where someone was really proud of a pair of shears he took. There were some cheap shears and he tried to convex them and shine them up. And um, that's, that's not what we're about. This is not a hobby. This is a business. And we need to take a shear um, for the way it was designed and the quality of its workmanship and make it perform for the hairstylist or the groomer or whoever. So in this case, let me walk you through um, the way I would have sharpened it given my training at the Jaguar factory and then the way maybe I would sharpen it um, with the limitations of what you have with, as far as tools and, um, and parts and then we'll look at what could have been done with Bob. So first of all I'm looking at his picture and it looks like he's put a good outside edge on it like he's followed the bevel and I assume he did a scratch test to match up the bevel. It looks like it, it's the correct angle. If you're interested in how to do a scratch test, put something in the comment section below and I'll do a, a video on that. Now, where he runs into problems is in doing the inside work. Now, in the Jaguar factory, when we did the inside, there was, um, it wasn't stones, it was, um, um, PSA paper and I was never told the exact grit but I'm thinking it was like maybe 600 and 1300 it felt similar to our Kitayama stone which is 1000 and 4000 I definitely wouldn't go anything smoother than the 4000 probably a 2000 he said he had a 2000 grit is what I would use the other thing on doing the inside rod, if you're taking it apart and you're doing the, doing the inside like he did, in the factory we would just take it and it was like one, two, three. Very careful about that positioning. And then go to the finer one, which the finer one was only like maybe 1300 grit if that. One, two, three. 
We're not working it and scrubbing it and trying to create something that's not there. Because the main problem is on these shears, <coughs> unlike um, the higher end shears, there's not a deep hollow. This is, if you look at it close, it's pretty flat. Let me come in closer for you. So this is a Jaguar shear. And um, if you notice it's just a regular screw here, but if you turn it over, this has one of these plastic nuts. Do you see that? You see I'm not only on the Jaguar. This one here is a from and it has the same type of black nut. When the screw is put in, it forms the threads in the plastic. The way, we're, the way I was taught in Germany when I sharpen these is I have to throw away that piece of plastic and put a fresh one in. And then I have to make sure that I tighten that screw in exactly to go in straight, no cross threading, or I'm in trouble. I spent a lot of time working on these screws and learning how to put this in. So if you take it apart, you better be sure you've got replacement parts and you have enough replacement parts that when you go to put the screw in, you if you put it in crooked, you can throw that away and start over. So here's my suggestion because most of the time you're not going to have these replacement parts. I would not take them apart at all because when once you start fooling with this screw and these pieces in here, you're going to have to sharpen them with them together. This is why um, the Jaguar, you know, prefers the shears to be sharpened by, you know, when they're authorized sharpeners. But um, if your customer wants you to sharpen them and you want to do it, do it without taking them apart. Do your um, scratch test. Make sure you're following the angle. Pull up your burr. And then you can either cut off the burr or I suggest, uh, there's two ways you can do this. You can take your shears and you see I'm pushing this way and I'm pushing that way. So I'm going to pull the blades apart a little bit, close them, and then open them. And do that a couple of times. And that takes whatever burr and pushes it on the outside. You can also get a paper towel or very often I'll use like a couple of plies of, this is the cheap toilet paper, toilet tissue, and cut through it and to cut the burr off. And you'll feel it pop off when you do that. Now you hear the noise these shears make? They're supposed to make that noise. That's the way they're designed. If you start trying to make these super quiet, you have messed up the shears and you might have to replace them. Don't try to make something do what it's not designed and intended to do. These are great quality shears. They'll last forever. They go a long time between sharpening, but they're not supposed to be quiet. They're not supposed to slide through the hair and slither. That's not what these animals were designed to do. So on these type of shears, less is more. You might feel like you're cheating your customer by just putting a burr on there and cutting it off. You're not if you're making the shears work. Now, if you want to smooth the inside, some of the options um, you have is we have, uh, oh, my, my, mine needs to be freshened up, but this is my arc hone. This is a 2000 grit. You can use it. I have tape on it. You can use it and just go down the inside a little bit to smooth it, smooth it out. You can use the ceramic stones that um, Wolf makes. Those are great. I do like the nail buffers. Now this one is well used as you see. I use it a lot uh, and it tells you what the grit is. See this side here is 3000 grit. That's pretty smooth. So you may want to use that and go over here. Now not all the nail buffers will tell you if it's 3000 grit. Some of them you can just feel it with your thumb and know that it's nice and smooth. This is not an emery board. This is like what the nail the, the nail techs we use on top of their nails. And you can go in here 
and slide it through there. Now, after you do that, you may feel you've pushed a little burr back to the outside. If you have, you can either go back on your machine and um, put a little, you know, put an edge on it again and, you know, work it back and forth till the burr is gone. You could also um, just take your nail buffer and knock that burr off if it's tiny enough. Um, I have just swiped them on my blue jeans or on a leather strop or whatever. The idea is that you're you're you've got that burr, you've created the burr, the burrs come on here, and then you, the burr might go here, but that you you just keep on until that burr is gone. But none of this should take more than just a very quick sharpening. When you try to do more on a type of shear like this, that's when you get into trouble. When I do the ISSA certification uh, with the International Scissor Sharpens Association, by the way, um, most of our members are actually in uh, other countries in the United States. So, I mean, if you're interested in that, we send you a couple of shears. But the reason I'm bringing that up is when I send you some shears, I'll usually send you a Japanese type shear, not, a, not one made in Japan, a Chinese um, USA finished shear is what I send you, usually that's been damaged, some nicks. Yeah. Nothing unusual, but I always will send you some kind of a cheap type. I, I don't want to use the word cheap, but a beveled edge. Uh, a, one that you're not going to do the inside work on. One that is going to sound, have a little crispy sound to it. And I'm going to do that to make sure that you know when less is more. So that you don't try to overdo and overthink what you're doing with the sharpening. Um, I do have a shear, this is a from shear, that was um, sent to me by another sharpener. And the edge, the inside is already, um, has been overly sharpened um, by, I guess they probably did a six, eight thousand, I mean six or eight thousand grit stone to sharpen it with. And I was able to fix it so that it does cut. And the way I test them, just to let you know, is I'll cut um, dry tissue. If it cuts dry on this type of shear, that's good enough. Hopefully it'll cut wet tissue too. And then sometimes I'll test them on hair. But that'll be my next video. This will also be some help for Bob because he might be able to take those shears and get them where they'll cut and maybe he won't have to replace them for his customer. Don't forget if you like this video to subscribe, like, comment, tell me about what other things you'd like to see and stay sharp and prosper.